as we start. Let us pray. Precious Lord, we give glory, honor, and praise unto your holy name. We thank you for blessing us. Thanks for your guidance. Thanks for your protection and care. And God, as we study your word, may your presence be with us. Speak to us. Speak, speak clearly that we may be able to understand your perfect will. Is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. I would like to say I'm, I'm glad to be joining you uh, this day. It's been a long day at work. And I know for those of you who are also at school, uh, you must have also had some uh, good time at school. Um, the theme that I was shared with and uh, the title for uh, this short pericope for the evening is the wired link i thank the lord that uh, whoever was inspired to share with me or uh, give this request i uh, decided not to stay far from where i practice on a day-to-day -day basis when i saw on the poster the image of uh, rj45 and patch cords then i knew i was at home uh, be it uh, technologically be it professionally i knew i was playing on my home ground and i i'm glad for that the wired link uh, this evening let's talk about the wired link and why the wired link why do we need a link and why specifically a wired link i want to take us quickly to the text and uh, i am hoping this is not going to be a long session i'm hoping to cut it short in righteousness and hoping that we will be able to pick something out of it in the book of john chapter 4 one of the places i love especially in the mission field john chapter 4 uh, the bible begins and and this comes after nicodemus has appeared to has gone to jesus christ and nicodemus asks jesus christ Christ, some of life's pertinent questions, and one of them is, uh, Sir, how can a man be able to see the kingdom? How, how can you be able to get to heaven? And, and he just wants to know how to get to that place. And, and when, you, when you read, he says, the Bible says that Nicodemus acknowledges who Jesus is and then asks Jesus these questions. And, and Jesus says, you cannot see the kingdom except you be born again. And, and you find the discourse. I, I don't know why. John chapter 4 immediately comes after John chapter 3, where Jesus has spent time with the leader of the Jews who knows so much about religion and, and yet who is uh, not born again. One who doesn't even... Uh, in the, in, in the short discussion they're having with Jesus, he, he comes out as one who seeks to know more about how can a man be born again. And when I look at it, Jesus explains everything about the new birth. And one of the things, even the text that we've come to love so much and we've come to acknowledge, the, the wonderful text found in the book of John 3.16, For God so loved the world. If Nicodemus had not come to Jesus by night, I don't know, would we have heard the text, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son. Now this text then makes me want to reflect more. Okay, God loved the world. God gave his only begotten son. Nicodemus has been given an experience over here. And when you walk beyond the experience of Nicodemus, we find ourselves in another experience. And, and this comes hot on the heels of the Nicodemus experience. One thing that is clear, Nicodemus learns from Jesus about the new birth. But I am yet to see the text in John chapter 3 where Nicodemus has told anyone about the new birth. Nicodemus learns it and Nicodemus seems to have uh, kept silent with it. You know, learned people who have, who have just learned about Jesus Christ and they don't want to spend so much time bothering people with the information of what they've learned. So they just keep it to themselves. That is Nicodemus. John chapter 4 reading from verses 1 says, When therefore... The Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made 
and baptized more disciples than John. In fact, in the parentheses, they say, though Jesus did not baptize, his disciples did the baptism. He must needs go through Samaria. Of necessity, he must pass through Samaria. And, and, and ask, where is the necessity? There are several other root ways, but, but you see, Jesus is interested in the souls of men. And he must needs go through Samaria. He left Judea, departed again into Galilee. He must needs go through Samaria. Then he cometh to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the parcel of land that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now, when you read that story, I've preached about this so many times. Uh, at times I'm even careful because I, I, I know there are uh, recordings that can go ahead of you. But when you read the story and having reflected on it a number of times, I say Jesus goes to a, a place where we are told there is the parcel of land that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. So when we are talking about this, this is a message by the Jews to the Jews and we expect the Jews to be talking about Joseph, the Jews to be talking about Jacob, the Jews to be talking about this as a form of heritage. And when you read the Bible, it says, now Jacob's well was there. Remember, the story in the whole of John chapter 4 is always revolving around the Samaritan woman, but Jacob's well was there. This is Jacob's well. The Samaritan woman um, is drinking from Jacob's well and I'm, I'm almost wondering, the Bible says Jacob's well was there, Jesus being worried sat there at about the sixth hour. And uh, you know the sixth hour is not the right time to go to the well. The temperatures currently in Kenya are uh, doing well at around the sixth hour. It's too hot. This is not the time for somebody to go to the well to fetch water. But, 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 but the Bible says the woman came to the well at that time there cometh a woman of Samaria to draw weather, water. Jesus said unto him, give me to drink. Jesus is asking the woman. And when you look at Jesus asking the woman for water, the Bible says in verses 9, let's get quickly to the main part of the story. The woman says to Jesus, how is it that you being a Jew asketh of me water to drink? Listen, how are you asking me water when you are a Jew? In fact, he's almost going along what you would understand better in um, the Kenyan context of tribal affiliation or uh, the other one which we just came from of uh, party affiliation. How can you of the other side of the political divide seek to ask me of this? And he's asking, you're a Jew. It is known. Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. This is common knowledge. We we have no dealings. In fact, when I read in the wonderful writings, I understood that one of the things, they, they, they were not supposed to associate, Jews and the Samaritans were not supposed to associate, but except for necessities. When Jesus is asking for water, Jesus is asking of a necessity. But the Samaritan, what does the Samaritan do? The Samaritan woman goes and tells Jesus, hey, we have no dealing. And Jesus says one word in verses uh, if thou knewest the gift of God. In other words, Jesus is saying, it, it seems like you don't understand something here. You, you, you are knowledgeable. And, and let me tell you, when I'm speaking to people who are at the university, these are knowledgeable team. You're knowledgeable. But it says, if thou knewest, and, and, and I dare say this when I speak to intellects, what do you know is the big question. If thou knewest the gift of God, and let me tell you, a number of times people think they are connected. Ah, I love this, the wired link. Let me tell you something. Looking from my professional background, uh, we normally talk of wired links and we have wireless links. But let me tell you something. Everyone loves wireless because uh, you're talking of, oh, give me the password and, and, and you're sitting here. But, but one thing you need to understand, you see, wired links bring in the aspect of higher data rates. We are talking. We are bringing in the aspect of security. This is a more secured link. And, and let me tell you, if, if you're going to compare two links, a wired link is directly connected to the router. You're directly connected to the router. You're directly connected to the source of that internet you need. The, 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 the speeds are perfect. Wired link. If thou knewest, let's get back to that. If thou knewest the gift of God, 
He says, And who it is that saith unto thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given you the living water. He says, The problem is, just because you've picked some signal, you think that you are connected. No, no, no. You need a perfect connection. You need a wired link. You need a connection that is serious. You need a connection that can handle high data rates. We are not dealing small things. We are talking heaven. This is high data rate we are talking about. We are talking about big things. I have not seen, mind has not even thought the things that God has prepared for us. We need a proper bandwidth. And he's saying, no, no, no. no let me tell you. If thou knewest, who is asking you to give him to drink? Ay, you'll have changed your question. You'll not have asked, do you know we don't have dealings? Listen, when you know the person who is asking you, you'll have asked the best question. The Bible says in verses 11 of John chapter 4, that the woman saith unto him, Sir, you have no thing to drink, to draw the water, and the well is deep. From whence hast thou this living water? Listen, spiritual things are spiritually discerned. Let me tell you, one of the reasons at times we have challenges is because we want to reason this out and calculate it like an experiment where you are putting things and this is supposed to give this outcome. If thou knewest the gift of God, it will be different. I sit back and I say, the woman asks, and, and logically so, hey, where, do, where, where are you going to get this water from? The, the well is deep. Listen, when you look, where are you connected? I, I, I think I need to ask that. What's your point of connection? You see, you, your, your point of connection determines a lot. Ah, let me tell you, when you're connected to football, you know everything football. When, when you're connected, whatever you're connected to, you just have a lot of information about it. But I tend to think we, we need to check what connection do we have. Do we have a stable connection? And I read this wired link and the woman says, according to our logic, you need uh, something to draw water. The well is deep. And, and then he asks, art thou greater than our father Jacob who gave us this well? In fact, now she goes to another level. She brings in the source, the, the, the greatness. We, we ascribe our greatness to Jacob. Our father was no mean person. He wasn't just your common person. Now, let me tell you, so many people have quoted their fathers when they're doing things. And, and then you will find people asking, are, are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us this? Are, are you greater than our father who did one, two, three? Are you greater than our father? It's a battle of fathers. And, and, and the woman over here, if you look at it well, the woman says, are you greater than Jacob? And as I told you, look at Samaritans. And, and, and I sit back looking at Samaritans. And, 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 and the Samaritans are, are, are having all these challenges. But when I sit back looking at the Samaritans, I've, 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 I've come to the conclusion. The Samaritans knew something which probably was not clearly understood by uh, these others. The Samaritans say, Jacob gave us the water. Jacob drank of it. And of this same well, his children drank of it. But the Samaritan is funny. If the children drank of it, Jesus is a descendant of Jacob. Where have you been reading from? But he says, are you greater? You, you know, this is a simple question. If you are addressing Jesus Christ, Jesus would have answered, yes, I am greater. But you see, I, I love Jesus in his progression. Listen, the fact that you have truth should not make you arrogant. Even with the truth, there is need for tact. Several years ago when I was younger in the faith, I, I, I think all I cared for was truth. I have the truth, so you must just listen to it. And, and I think that was arrogant preaching. Coming to think of it, the, the fact that you have truth, listen, package truth. Just because it is true, it doesn't mean you have to shout about it. At, at, times, at times, the audience may not be ready to listen to it, prepare the audience to listen to it, and that's why Jesus is asked, are you greater? Ah, no. Preacher, break it down, listen. 
If I was Jesus, and it's easy to say in a sermon, if I was Jesus and the Samaritan woman asks me, are you greater than our father Jacob? I would have said, listen to me, this is Jesus Christ speaking. I am greater. But listen, you have to humble yourself. Just because you have the truth, package it in a way that it can be received. And I see Jesus Christ. The Bible says, are you greater than our father Jacob who drank of this world? And Jesus says, listen, now let me tell you. I'm not competing with your father. I'm, I'm, I'm not competing with Jacob over here. I'm just telling you something. Whosoever drinketh of this well shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water which I shall give him shall never thirst again. Now listen. We, we are not arguing about. We are not arguing about the source. We are not arguing about who gave you. We are arguing about content. Please, it's, it's, and, and let me tell you, so many people are holding on to habits and behaviors whose origin is pathetic. Why? Because it was given by a big pastor. Hey, he had a big name. And, and listen, because of this, so many of us have rejected the gospel, the pure gospel, and have gone into, are you greater than our father Jacob? Jesus says, no, 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 whosoever drinks of this, and let me tell you, right now, even people who are seeking relevance, young people are seeking relevance from everywhere. Social media. I don't even have time. Social media has become just something else. When we can use social media in the right way, we have opted to use it even in the wrong way. Now the big question is, are you greater? And, and when we are asking the, the, the questions of greatness, I, I, I don't think it's, it's even greatness that we, we, we need to be talking about over here. He says we need to talk about the content. That what are you drinking of? Listen, and let me tell you, people can talk about entertainment, and I know there are things that can entertain us better than even the Word of God. The Word of God is not meant to entertain you. The Word of God is meant to transform you. I, I'm, I'm not here to entertain you. I don't even know how to entertain. It should be transformative. I, 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 I love it when somebody can say that the Lord spoke to me in that message. Not just getting entertained. We, we are not in, I, don't, I don't think it's the right time for entertainment. We don't have time for entertainment. That's, we are not talking greatness over here. I'm not, I'm not going to argue with you that how many people subscribed, how many people are following the message. How many, no, 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 we're not going to argue about that. It's not, are you greater? No. It's the content. And by the way, if you want a following, listen, they, there's, people are following strange things. Following strange things. And if you're going to go by the number of followers and the number of likes, let me tell you, Jesus is not going to be popular. But the content that he's giving, he says, whosoever shall drink of that water, you can go, you can drink of that secular music, and let me tell you, you will continue to thirst again. I've always asked myself a simple question. Why is it that most of these people who sing this uh, secular music, and, and, and you know them around, the diamond characters and the others, but I wonder, why is it that they're singing about love, but they are not loving each other? They are breaking up all the time. Why? Whosoever shall drink of that water shall thirst again. But whosoever shall drink of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst again. Now this is the gospel that the lady needed. She needed the real connection, not apparent connection. Ah, there's another lady. I, I, I love the wired link. Direct connection. And then you can be able to connect with others. When you read the text, there's another woman who touched the hem of his garment. Just touched the hem of his garment and there was, there was a response. And so many people had been coming close. But nothing happened. But this one touched the hem of his garment and there was substance. When you read in the text, it says, Whosoever drinks of this, well, shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water which I shall give him, shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him, shall give him, shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. This message was not even given to Nicodemus. Nicodemus was just told, ah, 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. And listen, this one you're speaking, you're speaking to a Jew. This is a scholar, Jewish scholar who knows so much. And he's told, listen, first things first, let's go to it. You need to believe. But the woman is told, no, 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 you, we are talking about water. Let's start from water. Whosoever drinks of this one, your problem is not even a thirst problem. I, I, love, I love Jesus for one thing. He addresses the real issue, not the apparent issue. Thirst is what you see. But the real issue is you are not satisfied. And, and let's deal with the satisfaction. Whosoever drinks of this, thirst again. Whosoever drinks goes to eternal life. And, and the Bible says, the woman says, give me that water. That I may never thirst nor come to draw. Then Jesus says, go call your husband. The gospel is intertwined with social messages everywhere. Go call your husband. There could be a reason why you're not understanding the messages. There could be a reason why preacher after preacher is preaching and you're not understanding. Go call your husband. And, and, and I'm almost thinking, just look into your social life. Hey, young people, at times it's tough when we are talking about, we want to go for missions. But, but how do we go for missions when we are not sorting our social lives? It says, go call your husband. Let like, Let's deal with the real issues. You have a social problem that is affecting... Uh, and listen, the wired link, this link is being affected by some social problem somewhere. The reason we are not effective evangelists, go call your husband. There's a social problem somewhere. And until we sort that social problem, listen, we cannot be able to talk to them. I, I heard we are preparing to go for the mission. And I, I heard there are several things for the Kigumo mission that is being planned and everything. But go call your husband. Go, go address that social life. It, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. When in, 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 in our universities where we are, we are into relationships, you are cohabiting with someone, go call your husband. Sort your social life before you start dealing with with this one. You don't want to drink this water when you've not sorted your social life. He says, clear it up. Clear it up. Go call your husband and come here. And, 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 and he says, this is, the, this is serious stuff. We have to deal with it because we are living in the end times. Go call your husband. I know you told me about several other things and, and, and look at the woman in a bid to try and uh, in a bid to try and wiggle out. You know, when you start talking social lives, like right now, somebody is really wishing that I get off from the social beat. I go back to the wired link and I talk about how to reach out to people and call them to the gospel. And that's what the woman tried. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Quickly. This is like many young people. You are in very funny relationships. Then you are asked, how many of you are single? Everyone complicated, calling it big terms. You don't even know whether you are in a relationship. That is the woman at the well. Is this message relevant to us? Yes. Because our social lives are just a mess. So this message is relevant to us. We are going to evangelize and yet we have a challenge with our social life. He says, go call your husband. He says, I have no husband. In fact, if in, 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 in the parlance of the youths of these days, if Jesus was to ask clearly, the woman have, would have written in the WhatsApp statement, complicated. Meaning, I, I don't want to admit that I don't have one, but I also don't want to admit that I have one. I, I, I just don't know what to admit. That somebody who is cohabiting with a boyfriend, go call your husband. The Bible says, the woman said, I have no husband. Jesus said, you've answered well. You have no husband. Because you've had five. Even the one you have right now is not your husband. In that, you have said the truth. In that one, you've said the truth that you have no husband. Of the things you've been saying, this one is true. Now, 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 let me tell you. I have come so that you can be able to have a perfect connection. 
When you have a perfect connection, you cannot be able to bring people to Jesus and connect them to Jesus when you are not connected to Jesus. And the reason you're not connected to Jesus is because you've had five. Even the one you have right now is not your husband. The reason you're not effective for Jesus is because you've been able to have five. The one you have right now is not your husband. In other words, Jesus is saying, you see, there are so many hindrances to your connectivity to Jesus. There are so many hindrances to your connectivity to Jesus. The, 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 the fact that there is a habit that is slowing you down, that, that one, you've had five habits. He says, no, no, no. Until you stop this husband problem, you are not ready to connect others. Because everyone you are going to see, you're going to see everyone as a potential husband. When you should be seeing everyone as a potential child of God. Don't need to think of preach, convert, marry. No, no, no. You, you, you can't preach, but you can't convert. You can't convert. Just do one thing. Choose one thing. Either you're an evangelist or you're a, in a relationship. Ah, I was guided. I should have. I, I should have stayed with. I should have stayed within the confines. You know, we are. We are. We are some of those preachers who are being given the boundaries. By the way, for the first time, I was given a theme. I was given a text, and I was given a title. And I took a sigh of relief. Then I said, okay, God, now give me the content. So let's go through this. The Bible says, go call your husband. And the text says, you have had five husbands. The one whom you have is not your husband. In that you say truly. The woman said, and this is the beat. Every time you talk social things and you try to relate social things to spiritual things, they take a break. Then they bring religious points of controversy. And you go to churches and you find people are arguing about controversial issues which are not really controversial. But arguing about the deityhood of Jesus Christ. All through, you've, you've always believed that Jesus is the son of God. You've always believed that Jesus is God. Now, all of a sudden, we are arguing about the deityhood of Jesus Christ. Could it be that there is something we are hiding Why we are arguing about that? By the way, I'm beginning to think twice on religious controversies. If you go to a university where the religious controversies are becoming more, just ask yourself, what is it that we are hiding under? That's why Jesus will say, go call your husband. Then the woman says, oh, sir, I perceive that you're a prophet. Our fathers, going back to the father's message, our fathers worshipped in this mountain. And yet you say Jerusalem is the place to worship. You say Jerusalem is a place where men ought to go and worship. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain. And points of religious controversy are still taking the standing point right now. We have serious issues to deal with, but we are going for religious controversies. In fact, if, if you look at it very well, social issues are becoming a tough point. But we are going for religious controversies. So there are arguments whether, is it true that we are all worshipping the same God? Is it true that God wants us to worship on a particular day? Is it true? And, and nowadays questions of is it true are coming too many. But when you ask is it true, I am asking is it false? Now, now that you are asking me is it true, I am also going to ask you is it false? Is it false? Is it a lie when God said that you shall not have no other gods before me? Is it true? No, is it a lie? So I'm asking, is it a lie that God said thou shall not commit adultery? Is it a lie? Oh, was the Bible lying to us when the Bible says thou shall not steal? Bible lying when it says that thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not bear false witness? Did the Bible lie when it is recorded that one of your father and mother? But I'm still asking myself, is it a lie? 
When the Bible explicitly says these things, when God says, honor your father and mother, when God says that you keep yourself pure, is it a lie? Oh, I perceive that you people, and religious controversies, I perceive that you say we should worship there. And, and now, this is the same thing. And right now, everyone is going to say, oh, I perceive you say, you Adventists say that Saturday is the day to worship. But our fathers worshipped God on Sunday. Then Jesus responds to the question. And answers and says, Jesus says to the woman, believe me. Jesus says to the woman, believe me. The hour cometh and now is when you shall neither worship God in Jerusalem nor yet on this mountain. Says you worship what you don't know. We worship what we know. For salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is. When the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Can you see Jesus has transcended the social challenges. And says listen. The point of controversy is not where to worship. The point of listen. The problem has never been the day of worship. The day has never been the problem. The calendar is enough to sort the issue of the day. The seventh day is clear on the calendar. The, the, the problem is not the day. He says the hour cometh and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Beloved, let's worship God in spirit and in truth. The woman is there now sitting and listening and Jesus, Jesus is now... Dropping the points, dropping the points, establishing a serious connection. Now, listen, now we, we are not dealing with small things. You, you see, the issue of exchanging husbands was a point of um, age. You, you didn't have a perfect connection. The, the, there were lots of data drops almost at every point. And, and that's why we were having slow speeds and it was hanging and it was rotating like this. Your life is constantly rotating like a mouse that is rotating somewhere. And, and the cursor keeps on rotating like this, loading for 10 minutes. Why data speeds are pathetic? And Jesus says, listen, now let, let, let's deal with the real data speeds. We, we, we are dealing with a wired link and I'm, I'm going to connect these things well. I'm, 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 I'm not telling you one thing. I want to connect you to high speed network. I, I, as I told you, I, I, I deal with these things on a regular basis and setting up networks, setting up new offices and new links and all those things. And, and I know what speeds are. I know, I, I know when you are on a, a microwave radio link and the, the speeds look to be good, but they're not so good. I know when you are on a wired link and, and, and the speeds look to be good and they're not so good. I know when you've upgraded, now we are dealing with gigabit, Ethernet, GBE links, and, and now we are looking at fiber optic connectivities and we are saying now, okay, we are seeing we are getting much better. I've, I've, I've seen these setups. And, and, and the speeds keep on increasing. And, and we keep on moving up and moving up. And, and you know what? Now we are dealing with big stuff. Jesus says, listen. You're talking social? No, no, no. You, you're talking controversial points in the Bible? No, 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 no. By the way, why are we arguing? God did not call us to be argumentative. He did not call us that. God is not looking for those who can win arguments. He's looking for those who can win souls. Please, let's stop the arguments. Let's go win souls. When you have spent time with Jesus, when you have a proper connection with Jesus, oh, the data flow there is so high, we don't have time for arguments. We are not winning arguments. We've been called to win souls. And so, the woman listens. And, and, and look, by the way, go, go and check the Bible very well. In John chapter 4, previously the woman was interjecting. Jesus says this, the woman interjects. But now he says, listen, I am telling you, the hour cometh and now is. Now this one you don't interject. I am telling you there are true worshippers and there are false worshippers. The true worshippers worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Please, they worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Two components of true worshippers. 
True worshippers do not worship inside the structure. True worshippers do not worship on a particular day. True worshippers do not jump up and down because they are filled with the spirit. True worshippers worship in spirit and in truth. Filled with the Holy Spirit and filled with the truth. They love God. True worshippers. The wired leg. Woman, the father seeketh such to worship him. Ah, so this woman was arguing about their father. Are you greater than our father? Are you? No, 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 he says there is a father who should be worshipped. That is the father I want to point you to. Please listen. When God calls us to be evangelists, he does not call us to call people to ourselves. We should point people to the father who is in heaven. The father seeketh such to worship him. The father seeketh such to worship him. And I love this. True worshippers. And, and, and when you read the text, the text says, why does the father seek people to worship him in spirit and in truth? Now listen to this. And, and that's why I said, it's, it, we, we're not going to get into arguments about, are you going to go into this structure? Are you going to go on this particular day? No, 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 no. Seek the truth. The Bible says in John chapter 8, that ye shall know the truth, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Truth and spirit. The Bible says in verses 24 that God is spirit. And they that worship him must. And you must have seen that. That's an imperative. That they that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. Two components of true worshipers. Beloved, we need to worship God. That's what I'm saying. You told me about the wired link and I still tell you. I, I love... But I loved even the graphics you showed. We are connecting. We are interested in the connection. Fidelity of connection. That's why we, we are not just going to pick passwords and join. Listen, you, you know, the beauty of a wired link, unlike what you always have of wireless and all that, the beauty of a wired link is you have to physically go and connect between here and the other one. There has to be a physical connection. When we are dealing with God, we need to have a connection with God, not an apparent connection. You see, the problem is, some of us think that because my father was in the spirit, because my father was a preacher, so I can... Oh, no, no, no. It's a wired link. Not apparent. It's, you, you're not going to rely on the religiosity of your father. You're not going to rely on the piety of your grandmother. Listen, you may have come from the descendants of those who were with Cascalen when the Adventist message came to this place. But listen, unless you have a connection with Jesus, it doesn't count. The effective link is the wired link. We need a connection with Jesus. He says they will worship him in spirit and in truth. The Bible says, the woman says, and now you'll see it. The woman says, I know that the Messiah cometh. I've always said the Samaritan woman was an Adventist. The Samaritan, because who are Adventists? Adventists are those who are looking forward to the Advent. The Samaritan woman was a true Adventist who came and said, I know the Messiah cometh. And when, who is called the Christ? And when he is come, he will tell us all things. The Samaritan woman knew the role of Jesus. Some of us don't even know what Jesus is coming to do. The Samaritan woman says, I know the Messiah cometh. And when he comes, he will tell us all things. I dare ask you a question as I close. Do you know that the Messiah is coming? Do you know that he is going to tell us all things? What do you know? I know the Messiah cometh. What do you know? That's why I said we need a wired link. He says, I know the Messiah cometh. We need to know about Jesus coming again. Let me tell you, I... I I, I don't love certain things that we go through. Today I've had even to go to the hospital and see my friend in hospital. Now that was painful. I, I, I just didn't like that. I, I went to see my friend in hospital and, and, and she's unwell. And I'm like, Jesus needs to come again. This thing has to come to an end. You know, he, he, 
he, we will understand it. Uh, the songwriter says, we will understand it better by and by. But he says, until then, my heart will go on singing. Because between now and then, it's tough. It's tough. The Samaritan woman knew, even when life was difficult. Yes, the Samaritan woman was going for temporary assistance here and there with men. But, but, but listen, she says, I know the Messiah coming. Those who are waiting for the Messiah must behave like those who are waiting for the Messiah. That is the gospel. The Bible says, Jesus says, I that speak to you, I am he. Ah, Jesus finished the connection there and then. Jesus says, you've hovered around power enough times. You know, uh, it's, it's, you, you can spend all the time next to an electricity pole and you will still be in darkness. You need to be connected directly to eat. And he says, I that I'm speaking to you, I am he. I like this. Jesus, when you are interested in a connection with Jesus, Jesus will go directly and tell you, I that I'm speaking to you, I am he. The Bible says, oh, the disciples came back. Ah, but the, the disciples, when they came back, they're wondering, why is Jesus speaking? The Bible says, and I love this part as I near the close. I am closing the next five minutes. The Bible says, and I love this, that the woman left her water pot and went her way into the city and saith to the men, not to the women. The woman who has had several husbands, the woman who is more like a husband snatcher, the woman who is feared by the other women because he is taking people's husbands, comes to the men. He says, I, I know, I was looking for men, but now let me tell you, I have met a real man. The connection and let me tell you i i, I read in, in in those marvelous writings where it is it is recorded that everyone who has had an experience with jesus every converted soul then becomes an avenue of spreading the gospel the, the, the impulse of every soul that has experienced jesus is to talk about jesus let's experience jesus more let's have a connection with jesus and let me tell you we will talk about him We'll talk about him. Could it be the reason we have not evangelized well for Jesus is because we have no connection? We don't have a wired link. We have a broken link. We have an intermittent link. The data losses are too high. I don't know. I don't know. I think I need to finish it. Verse 29 says, the woman says, come see a man. I have been connected Jesus has spoken to me. Now come see a man. You know, the, the, this is Jesus. A, a woman who had started by rejecting the pleadings of Jesus. Oh, give me water. No, 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 I can't take your water. Oh, do this. No, no, I can't do that. The woman who had been rejecting Jesus from the first verse all the way and giving excuses now drops a water pot, does not wait for any other thing and goes and tells people, come see a man. Just come and see. Come see a man who has told me all things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? That's it. Come see a man. And today we are saying, if you have a wired connection to Jesus Christ, your call will be to the others. And you will tell them, listen, I've experienced proper data reads. I've experienced fidelity. I've experienced goodness. I've experienced wonderful speeds. Come, connect to this. Come see a man. And he says, come see a man that told me everything that I ever did. Listen, the desires of my heart have been satisfied because I have experienced this man. The Bible says, and they went out of the city and they came to him. And when you read in verses 39 of John chapter 4, the Bible says, and many of the Samaritans that were of the city believed on him for the saying of the woman which testified, he told me all things that I ever did. They believed for the saying of the woman who was connected with Jesus. Allow me to close. A woman who had rejected all the pleadings of Jesus from the point of water, when the woman had a clear 
message from Jesus. And a clear guideline of what is necessary for you to inherit the kingdom, for you to be able to have everlasting life. The woman gave her life to Jesus. Attained a proper connectivity with Jesus. And was interested in connecting everyone with Jesus. What am I saying? Establish your connection with Jesus. And you're going to be effective in connecting others to Jesus. Could it be the reason we've not been so effective? Is our connection with Jesus is weak? If that's the case. But why can't we start? A woman started with Jesus from the well. And became the greatest evangelist. In fact, the Bible says... So when the Samaritans were come over to him, they besought him that he would tarry with them. He abode there for two days, and many more believed because of his own word, and said unto the woman, Now we believe, not because of the saying, for we have heard him ourselves, and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. Listen to me. Let's go and tell people about Jesus. Establish a good connection with Jesus at a personal level. Before we go telling others about Jesus, let's establish a good connection with Jesus at a personal level. A wired link is not just a message title. Wired link should be, we should be connected with Jesus Christ. And let me tell you, if that could happen, the impact of our lives would be great. May God bless you. And as we prepare for the mission, as we prepare to go and share with others about Jesus Christ, I pray that we may be properly connected with Jesus so that we can be able to share with others the message of a good connection, a wired link with Jesus. May God bless you and may God keep you safe. That's our closing word of prayer. Heavenly Father, not unto us, but unto you be glory, honor, and dominion now and forevermore. We need a good connection with you. This world and its challenges, there are just too many things that are paining us in this world. God, we need to go home. We've been waiting for you. But God, it would be a tragedy for you to come back to take the saints home those of us who thought that we had a connection with you realize that we don't have a connection and so we can't go home. So I pray God that within the confines of this message, may you impress us on the need to be properly connected with you so that we can be able to connect others with you. Guide us God that we may be able to reach out to others, that we may be able to live godly lives and God, help us to reflect on our lives. For true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. God, now I pray generally for all of us. There are some who may be going through various challenges or even further illnesses, social life, financial. Generally, life is just tough. God, right now we are in the middle of a drought. We are in the middle of an economic crisis. We just have so many things. And so, God, I can't even enumerate all of them. But every one of us who is experiencing the challenges of this world needs to understand that this world cannot satisfy us. And we need the satisfaction that comes from you who can be able to give us a water that will satisfy us forever. God bless us to trust in you now and always. It's my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you all and the Lord keep you safe.